The Bible is quite the ancient almanac of moral lessons, and of course, religious teachings. Concerning what it has to say about women, it's chock full of verses that are directly intended for wives and daughters, among the wider spectrum of its audience. For starters, Proverbs 31 is like the go-to chapter that paints a picture of the virtuous woman, someone who is industrious, capable, and the pillar of her household. This depiction is often hoisted up in many circles as the standard to which wives and women should aspire. Let's not forget Ephesians 5, 22, 23, where wives are called upon to submit to their husbands as unto the Lord. It's a contentious bit of scripture that ruffles feathers these days, to say the least. Debate swirls around whether it's a dictum of oppression or simply a call for mutual respect and support within the marriage dynamic. Interestingly, the very next verses, Ephesians 5, 25, 33, implore husbands to love their wives just as Christ loved the church, i.e. with a willingness to sacrifice everything. So it's a two-way street when you look at it contextually. Moreover, there's the story of Mary, the mother of Jesus, Luke 1, 46, 55, who magnifies the Lord in a song known as the Magnificat. She exemplifies humility, obedience, and faithfulness, not just for women, but for all believers. Now, if we want to talk daughters, you'll find in the book of Exodus, 2012, the same command given to both sons and daughters, honor your father and mother. This is foundational stuff, and it's egalitarian in nature. The daughters were held to the same standard of respect towards their parents as the sons. Of course, the Bible also has its share of darker, more archaic-sounding passages concerning women that stem from a vastly different cultural context. Some of these passages can be quite the can of worms to open. Worth noting, the Song of Solomon gives us some of the most poetic and intimate verses that celebrate love and physical attraction in a relationship, turning away from viewing women merely as virtuous figures or obedient partners, but also as objects of devotion and equal partners in love. It's exceptionally complex, much like the city I call home, Portland, Oregon, where discussions on gender and roles are often vibrant and multidimensional. Just as in Portland, where we're always wrestling with the old and the new, the Bible reflects a conversation centuries old that's still in full swing today. If you're wanting to go deeper, I'd recommend checking out educational resources and engaging with communities that can help explore these texts further. Not unlike those quirky book clubs and discussion forums we love here in the Pacific Northwest. Read Proverbs 31 on Bible Gateway. HTTPs, www, BibleGateway.com passage, search equal sign, Proverbs plus 31 and version equal sign NIV. Read Ephesians 5, 22, 33 on Bible Gateway. ATPS, W, BibleGateway.com passage, search equal sign, Ephesians plus 5% 3, A2233 and version equal sign NIV. Read Luke 1, 46, 55 on Bible Gateway. ATPS, WW, BibleGateway.com passage, search equal sign, Luke plus 1% 3, A4655 and version equal sign NIV. Read Exodus 2012 on Bible Gateway, ATPS, WW, BibleGateway.com passage, search equal sign Exodus plus 20% 3, A12 and version equal sign NIV. Read Song of Solomon on Bible Gateway, HTTPS semicolon slash slash www.biblegateway.com slash passage slash question mark. Search equal sign song plus of plus Solomon plus one ampersand version equal sign NIV. It's a lifelong learning journey, whether you're religious or just historically curious. The underlying themes and morals of these ancient texts still permeate through time and continue to shape our societies, raising countless questions and discussions for those of us nestled here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest and beyond.